What is it like to stand on top of the world, nothing short of exhilarating, say those who've made it to the top of Mount Everest's summit 29,029 feet above sea level, at the cruising altitude of a 747. The spectacular view aside, part of what makes the experience so exhilarating is that getting there is no walk in the park carrying pounds of equipment up vertical inclines while enduring freezing temperatures, blinding sunlight, and the possibility of being buried alive by avalanches or swallowed by hidden ice crevices makes the trip difficult enough. Now imagine doing all that while holding your breath, that's what it feels like as the change in atmospheric pressure and thinner air takes its toll on the human body, making even minimal tasks feel like an impossibility. Acclimatization is a process that spans several weeks and allows climbers to adjust to the different environmental conditions atop Everest. Base camp sits at 17,600 feet above sea level, but then there is a series of four camps above base camp, each approximately 2,000 feet higher than the last, as the movie states. Hall's system of becoming acclimatized involved several trips between each, so that the climbers could get used to the decreasing oxygen concentrations without shocking their bodies. At 29,029 feet above sea level there is less oxygen and the air essentially becomes thinner. There is also less nitrogen, argon, and other gases that make up the air we breathe. These high altitude conditions are associated with feeling out of breath and make it hard for climbers to exert themselves in any way without feeling fatigued. To make it easier, or at least less life-threatening, climbers are fitted with supplemental oxygen tanks when venturing above 8,000 meters. Hall's team used state-of-the-art Russian-built oxygen systems that had a stiff plastic oxygen mask connected via a rubber hose and a crude regulator to an orange steel and Kevlar gas canister. Each tank weighed about 6.6 .6 pounds when full. Altitudes above 25,000 feet lie within what is known as the death zone. At this height, climbers' bodies are literally dying. When climbers venture into this zone, they subject themselves to the potentially deadly effects of oxygen deprivation. 